Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for giving us a click of your time. We're about to talk with Zar Larson. First, I got to beg you to please give us your honest feedback in the comment section below. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe, even if you hate us, because without that subscription, Dan, we're going to have to stop doing what we do. Like and comment and subscribe, please. We beg you. Okay, let me get Zar Larson on this thing. Let's do this. Oh, what's up? Hey, what is going on? What is this setup that you have? I look like I'm in a f TV studio. <laughs> you do. Where are you really? <laughs> I'm in a studio. Just to, like a musical. Oh my gosh. But I've had like a, a, a press day. But oh this is all for you, obviously. No way. Look at that lamp behind you. It's like a crane turtle thing. I, I feel like it must have a symbolic meaning. Uh, maybe it does. Wait, what is? Oh, and it's eating something. It's eating like a butterfly. So oh, the, oh, that's sad. Poetic. Yeah. Could be, could be sad. sad. Poetic. I mean, by the way, some poems are sad. Uh, that is true. A lot of poems are sad. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. My uh, pony's very tight, so I feel like I had a facelift. <laughs> Do you request for a tight ponytail or does it just happen? It kind of just happened. Have you ever had a really tight pony? No. Um, but I have friends who have very famous ponytails. Yeah, and absolutely. they do go, they, they, I think they've gone, gone tight sometimes. I actually took a painkiller. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm okay. I'm good. Well, I, why do a hairstyle that makes you take medicine to, to, to fix the pain? Pain is beauty. Pain is beauty. That's what they say. I don't know. I think it was worth it. Just for this time. You really are gorgeous. And by the way, I feel like there's a story that started on our show that sticks with you no matter the interview that you do. And it has to do with Ariana Grande and you being in the studio with her. I feel like that started on our show, but I could be wrong. But I think it also started from a photo. I don't know who shared it. It was someone that I was writing with because you know like a lot of people that I write with like Victoria or Tommy they're yeah. like her best friends so sometimes she'll like pop in and be like what's up and then she was just around and we did these like full on like choir background vocals in the stair kind of like the staircase just to get these like really churchy ones and uh and then people were like, so I heard, and we were like 10 people plus in there. And then it turned into like, Ariana Grande is going to be your feature. And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that. Yeah, let's manifest that together. <laughs> right. I was in the studio one of those days, and I don't go to cool studios very much. I was so surprised to see you. I was like, oh my gosh. He yeah, lives I outside of the studio. Yeah, I don't. I don't go into those cool studios very much. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck in my own. But is that has that song ever seen the light of day yet? Not yet, but I like it a lot. I think it's, it's really, it's kind of deep because it was also from a place where me and one of the girls that I was writing with, Isabella, we were just chatting about the times where you don't feel great, like. When you feel a bit of anxiety and honestly, when you were like, I wish I could be someone else because I have friends who, and it's so provoking to me how they're just happy all the time. I'm like, <laughs> I want to be that. I want to be you. Can we just switch bodies for like one day? How is your chemical balance in your brain so good? Um, and it was basically like, I just wish I was someone else. So it's not really a love song. It's more like a... Yeah, it's it's a different meaning because most of my songs are about love, and this one really wasn't. And uh, even though it's quite sad, I think everyone, to some extent, can recognize themselves in it. Mm -hmm. At least sometimes we're just like, oh, I'm having this really bad day, and I just wish I could like go be someone else. Are you going back and listening to records that you've created to curate this album, or are we creating as we speak? I, I'm not creating anymore. I think to some point, you just kind of have to stop yourself in the boots and say, enough. 
because I've been doing this now for like three years. Yeah. And uh, why I've been doing this for three years is because I'm like, oh, but it could be better. Or like, we could do this better. Or like, we could do this better. And it's like, I could have released three albums by now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because life is always, a, uh, uh, you develop all the time. Like, I think I'm better than I was last year. And hopefully I'll be better than I am now next the next year. So, uh, yeah, at one point you just got to birth this baby that I've been pregnant with for way too long. <laughs> and I have like a three-year-old in me right now. I mean, it's been like a year, two years, whatever, since I've seen you making songs somewhere. Yeah. So, and obviously Love Me Land, it's, you have writing credit on it. Julia Michaels, yes. Justin Tranter, mm-hmm. um, Madison Love, I believe. Right? So you have quite that's a great group to learn from right oh for sure i've been so 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 lucky to like from the start when i started writing i was like a signed artist and i had already released songs when i started writing so i just got really lucky to be in the room with people who are literally the best songwriters in the world you know what i'm saying like there's no other people that could I would rather be in the room with. Um, so it's it's very inspiring, but also it did give me a lot of confidence or it, it maybe it took me a little time, but now, and I won't lie, like I'm not at the, I'm not on the same level as like Madison or Julia because um, they're like Dude, writers. They, you know they, they, I mean like, yeah, two of the most, <laughs> Forward yeah, but, thinking but writers hopefully in the I'll, I'll get like close to that yeah. and I think when you're in a room you just got to be a little confident because maybe I said this before but when I'm in a room sometimes and I'm like maybe the next line should be this and I'm like no why, why would I say that that's stupid and then two seconds later someone else is like what if we say this like exactly what I'm thinking and everyone's like that's great and I'm like you can't second guess yourself (laughs) (laughs) yeah you just gotta believe in yourself a little bit and i think for me as a writer it's taken me a little bit more time because i haven't done that for as long as i've been singing but just knowing like i know i know it could i know my stuff could be cool you know what i'm saying i just gotta believe in myself what are you confident in in the studio melodies for sure that's where i'm at um I think it, it might be like a Swedish thing too. Like Swedish people are good at melodies. I don't know. That's what people say. Uh, that's what like history says and like music charts say. You know. Uh, and when I do say stuff, I. It's usually, so like when I write lyrics, it's tense. It, it goes into very like Drake mode. <laughs> Explain that, please. <laughs> usually, if I have something I want to say, I have it like pre-written if it's something because normally i go into the studio and i'm like let's see what we come up with today Mm -hmm. i don't necessarily have like an idea that i've been thinking about or something i I, it's mostly like let's go with the flow and it usually ends up being really cool but when i do have something to say it's usually like a really long note and something that might be a little deeper that i've been thinking about and then it just goes into this like the verse is is like this long (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just want to like spit. Um, and I don't know. I'm just way better at melodies at the moment. And I love melodies. I love melodies. I think it's so fun. And um, I don't know. Some some writers have are really good at one thing and others are really good at some things. And then we have the people who are fantastic at both. But uh, I think it's fun. And I really love to be a part of a song because even though there are like writers behind it on also some of my songs that I didn't write. Mm -hmm. I'm not super proud like that. If it's something that I love and I didn't write, I won't be like, let me change that second verse and make it just because I want credit. (laughs) Wow is an example of that, right? (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I didn't write that, but I think it's, it's stunning. And I think lush life is great. One of my biggest songs, symphony, same thing. Like, when a song is good, a song is good. But then, of course, it's it's amazing and it's such an incredible feeling to be a part of something that you sing. Because, like, I was going to say, like, when you, when, even though you have writers behind you, 
you're the person on stage. Like people are gonna think about that song and think about you. you it's know. your story. They're, you're one in the same. Yeah. Yo, beautiful human, I got to hit pause on our conversation with Zara just for a second to give you a message that's been paid for by NHTSA. Everybody knows about the risks of driving drunk. You could get in a crash. People could get hurt or killed. But let's take a moment and look at some surprising statistics. This is shocking. Almost 29 people every day in the United States are killed in an alcohol-impaired vehicle crash. That is one person every 50 minutes. Even though drunk driving fatalities have fallen by a third over the last three decades, driving drunk still claims more than 10,000 lives a year. Drunk driving also has a huge impact on your wallet too. You can get arrested and incur huge legal expenses. You could possibly even lose your job. So what can you do to prevent drunk driving? It's kind of easy. Plan a safe ride home before you start drinking. Designate a sober driver. If someone you know has been drinking, take their keys and please arrange for a sober ride home. We all know the consequences of driving drunk, but one thing's for sure, you are wrong if you think it's no big deal. Drive sober or get pulled over. Can you explain the timeline for a while? Because the song's not new, but it is blowing up now. I know, it's, it's funny like that because it was actually synced for a commercial like over a year ago. It was this like, bank commercial yeah, capital one or something yeah it, I think was, it was Citibank. It was Citibank, i think um yeah. and uh, they were just i don't know how they heard the song epic's actually really really good at syncing songs for movies or commercials and stuff so i guess they must have played it in a meeting and they were just going crazy over it and i i said yeah why not like let's get a bag and uh, <laughs> And they sang it for their commercial, and people sh- started shazamming it like crazy, like insanely. And we were like, what's going on? So we thought, why just not release it, just to have it out there for the people who do want to enjoy it? We don't necessarily have, because nowadays when you drop a song, people think like, this is your single. But that was not the case with WOW. So we were just like, let's drop it. Let the people enjoy it, the people who, who like it, and uh, let's keep working on this album and also give them a little treat, you know, for because I haven't really been dropping music. This was like after Ruin My Life. And um, and then it got synced again to this Work It, so, uh, Work it movie on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And um, got another bag. The same thing happened. Like Shazammed it. Like it was like top five in the world, top five in the US. And as an artist, it's the dream when something like that happens because it kind of proves without like heavy playlisting or without heavy um, radio backup, which of course as like a, a pop artist you want, but it still shows that it was like a genuine reaction from people. Yeah. Like it was like an organic reaction. People responded to that song really well. So now it's like why just not give it a chance see what happens with it and let's take it a radio and and give it you know the life that it, it deserves so i don't know it's over a year old but that's what's funny about music i feel like the same thing happened with lizzo when she reached number one it was like a two-year-old song and then eventually people were like wait this is really good lizzo so many songs have been slept on throughout history i'm pretty sure hey there delilah is one of those songs and it's one of my favorites that song was out that was for not like, slept on though. Dude, it was out for like two years. Then it became something. Could be wrong, but I don't song. think so. I'm pretty it sure it was. I cry every time I hear it. Yeah, it, it really transports you somewhere, and everybody has a different place that they go and they hear it. When a song like Wow gets put in Work It, do they ask you for your approval? Do they ask if you want in there? Do you have any say in that? You know what was so funny? It was a complete shock to me. So I got like messages saying, hey, people are, uh, people are loving Wow. Like, did you see the movie? And I was like, what movie? Like, I had no idea. I guess it does have to go through some sort of... Approval? Like, yeah. Um, possibly throughout my, my label. But I trust them enough to know, like, to not have it in a really weird like situation or a strange movie like that were you guys planning on putting the song out originally or were you sleeping on it for a reason wow yeah like was it in existence before the bang commercial no so it was literally not out and they just wanted to have that song for like their commercial 
and then and then I was like, yeah, sure, why not? You can have it. <laughs> were then, you planning on putting it on your album, or what were you thinking about doing was, with it? It was in discussion because um, we were just like, I, I still haven't made up my mind completely <laughs> about my album, but we were talking with the label. The label loved it. I thought it was cool, and then we were like, who's going to produce it? Then later Marshmallow kind of jumped on it. So we were kind of in the middle of – of like discussing it um and then i knew my album wasn't c- gonna come out for a while so we just said yeah let's let's have it on there um just for fun literally like cute little check um it is a fun song fit it really good to the commercial it was like a fun commercial she was going to this concert whatever uh and then it was so exciting to see people's reactions so then we thought well we have to at least release it and just see what happens with it and then it just kind of stay there for a little while until you know isn't it crazy though how like syncs can really yeah you know what i'm saying like really life. give music life totally I'm reading an article now that says after Work It came out, the stream numbers went from 17,000 streams a day to 447,000 streams a day. Yeah. Sick. Sick mode. <laughs> 5,000% or something. I don't know math. Don't. <laughs> so how many songs do you have chilling somewhere that are album ready? Well, like mixed and mastered, like 12. Like okay. a solid 12. Yeah. Is- but it's like you say with the how many songs that never – got to be hits like imagine how many songs not only from me but like all your favorite artists have in just their laptop just laying around sad (laughs) i've heard you talk about the album we were just talking about you working with ariana but i've also heard you say you were flip-flopping on whether you want features on the album or not yeah that is true why can't you make up your mind on that i think I have a few artists that I really would like to work with and I haven't heard their verses on them yet. Um, But in my dream, like my dream scenario would be to write a song with them in the room, like to come up with something together that we really, really love. Cause I've just lived with the songs now for a long time. And Honestly, I think a feature is really cool to have on because it really adds something. Um, but also, I'm very proud over how it sounds, and I think I I think I'm I'm confident in how it sounds with just me on it too. So it's like I think I think though it's always a a bonus, like a fun little bonus to have someone that you are a big fan of on the record. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary. It's like a really nice dessert, like Cher would say. Um, but let's hope, you know, let's hope that the people that I want to have on want to do it and that they sound really good on it. And these would be people that you're not in the studio with. Yeah, especially now since I literally can't be. Yeah. Um, but I, I've i never been in the studio with them before. And it would be a dream of mine. Like, yeah, in a dream world, we would, like, have this super nice day. First, we would go to a picnic and, like, get to know each other. And then we would, like, go to the studio and, like, write a song that we both love. And then we would put it out and we have, like, this great story to tell. But that's not how it usually works in the feature world anyways. Well, the Ariana story is cool. Maybe that song will see the light of day. One day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why, why I said that was that... Even though I might release that song, like you will not like be able to hear that it's her in all of these vocals um, that she in the song. But she is in there somewhere. Layered somewhere. <laughs> Layered just like, yeah. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, but I would look. Yeah, first of all, I always say that in every interview. Like she's one of the people that I would love to have a collab with. I'm too shy to ask. <laughs> well, but like, if you watch this, like, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you also say you have songs with Ed Sheeran that you don't know what you're doing with yet? Mm, not with him. I've been in the studio with him a while back, 
and uh, I would love to write some more with him. He's a phenomenal, like we we already know that. I'm just kicking in open doors now, but he's one of the best writers in the world, and like one of the most chill but people I've ever Are you heard. nervous before you get into the room with him? A little bit, but then it took like five minutes and you realize he's just the chillest guy on the planet. Like he's just a regular schmegler dude who, uh, he's very, like he's just funny. Have you met him? Yeah, he's come on the show, but not in person. Good energy. Good energy. Like, I'm so happy I was on tour with him. I literally could not have a better tour. Um, and it was really inspiring. I always say this, but, like, I really thought it was so nice to see someone as big as he is doing stadium tours, having all of these hundreds of people working around him and for him. And he would, like, say hi to everyone. Because some artists are like, don't look at them when they go in the hallway. Like, oh. don't speak to them. Like, you know, I'm, they actually have those rules. Yeah. And he was just like, he came in, like, every time, knocking on our dressing room, like, hey, you good? Everyone's all right. Like, good luck tonight. And then we would have, like, tequila nights. And we would, like, go hang out at his house where he was staying. He was just, like, a friend. And it's kind of sad, though, that I have to be so shocked by an artist being that nice. Because they're all humans. So, really, yes, you do have a job that makes you idolized uh and you're really good at what you're doing to everyone who's doing music at like a big level but also like you're just a person you know what i'm saying you clearly had a bad experience with somebody oh uh, no not, not, <sighs> like, not even not even because i haven't been on tour with anyone else but i definitely being in the industry like i met some people and i i know people i know people who know people you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> oh i know <laughs> I bet you know too. <laughs> Come on, don't put it all on me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, people, all different types of people exist out there, truly. And, you know, on one side, you have those people. And then on the other, you have people like Ed and Ariana who happen to be yeah. really incredible human beings. And, yes. and they remember that they're just human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very cool. I mean, but I think also you have to be like, to be. I think the people who are really sweet and nice are also people who are confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't have to prove anything. Yeah. They're just like <laughs> at peace with who they are. But are. Are you at peace with who you are? Um, I hope so. Am I nice? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Am I rude? Am I a little bit? No, you're very <laughs> nice. <laughs> I hope so. I hope very I can nice. always stay like humble. <laughs> Um, and thankful and grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Zara, I want to talk about Love Me Land, but before we get into that, you put out Love Me Land as the single, but then WoW kind of took over, right? Took over. I couldn't help it. <laughs> and this is what always happens in my career. Because I said to the people I work with, I was like, yeah, finally, like, we're going for one single. We're doing this. Because <laughs> it's always been like, lush life or never forget you and then it's like symphony over here and I, I always have to like double check every time i go and do a radio interview like what song am i promoting <laughs> like where are we what song <laughs> I have to talk about? yeah because you have different singles that are going at different times in different parts of the world and um i love i like i love love milan i think that is like the sickest song ever um, but then wow just kind of happened and it got some more momentum than I wanted love. Like I want to love me land to like have that in the beginning and then kind of wow got that. So you just got to like, okay, we're changing the directions a bit. We're going to bed. Yeah. So, um, and it's fun. You just gotta, you just gotta grab whatever attention you have, I think at the moment, cause I'm also at a point where, I don't know, like, I'm not a household name, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't just release something and, every, like, the world stops and everyone goes and buy, buys it. Uh, but hopefully to get to that point, yeah, like I said, you just got to grab the momentum mm -hmm. and, like, do the best of whatever situation. And I think, like I said earlier, I do think it is really cool and exciting that WoW just had, like, a really genuine reaction. And maybe now when I think back at it, maybe we should have just 
gone to radio with that like a year ago. But it's always really, I have, I always have these thoughts and it's always easy to be like smart after something happened. But well, here we are and WoW is getting like a lot of recognition that I never thought it would, but it is. So let's see what happens. You know, I have some, I have like music videos and singles like ready to go. And for the first time, I feel like not only can I release like, oh, here's a song bye, see you in a year. Like I actually have stuff lined up. I'm, I feel really ready and prepared. And this is more of like a, I have like a plan. Uh, so this was just kind of like a side thing that came in and it just kind of added a little fuel to the Zara fire. Oh which is always a positive thing, I think. Totally. And, and by the way, hindsight is twenty twenty. You learn from absolutely everything. Yes. And all attention is good attention, especially when it's wrapped around an amazing record that yeah. provides bags for everybody. You know? <laughs> and it happens to be with one of the biggest producers in music right now. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it helped that it was in like the, uh, the kissing scene in Work It. I think that helped. Totally, it was the best scene. Like, come on, I it, it was like the scene. They're dancing, they're being like a little cute and flirty, and like, and then the kiss cops. Come on, <laughs> Dan, but, you watched it. Yeah, yeah, I saw that clip. It's called Research, and someone tagged me in it. Dan has a crush on Sabrina Carpenter. She's a cutie, isn't she? Okay, first of all, Zara, yes, Zach, no, no. You know what? You know what? Actually, actually, you know what? You know what? You. Know what? I think people will love this. I am in love. I, I'm in. I'm in love with Sabrina Carpenter. I am in love with Sabrina Carpenter. Is that what everybody wants to hear? She's so sweet and she's is that, gorgeous. Is that what the fans want? What's there's, not to love? That's it. There's a lot to love. There's so much. Are you even worthy? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. We were. I was researching the song, and I just saw that it was in the kissing scene, and I said that has to help. I mean, everyone's going to focus I think on that so too. I, I definitely think that it helped, because um, it was like a really important scene. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it was like the heavy. It's like having the the song on like the final episode of this big series that everyone's been watching, like. Who had that? Who I think it was a Swedish artist who had who got really really big. Was it like Lil or something from Grace Anatomy, and it blew up from like that would be. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah, it's it's really sick. Like I said, like how music could just like because I discovered Labyrinth through Euphoria. Oh wow! A, yeah, like. I kind of knew about him, but I didn't know he was like that. <laughs> and then I watched Euphoria, and I was just like, I have to get into this guy. I just have to get into him. And um, He's an amazing so, artist to get into, by the way. He, yeah. He's unreal. Oh. Yeah, unreal. Unreal. By the way, Grey's Anatomy alone introduced me to Snow Patrol, The Fray. Yeah. Yeah, like, you see? Great. Especially now since everyone's home and like that's what? all they do, I guess. Just watch a whole bunch of movies and series. And what are you doing? Are you just listening obsessively to all the music that you've created over the last three years to try to figure out what makes the album or what? I am doing that sometimes. Um, and then I, I think I should be... I saw Netflix was like posting a while back... Uh, that they wanted like professional watchers of their shows to rate them. And they were like, but you have to watch something like 12 hours a day. I was like, I do that every day. <laughs> like, <laughs> hire me. <laughs> That's all I do. Hey, what do you me. mean? I watch everything. Um, I think my favorite so far is Ozark. I can't believe I haven't gotten into that earlier. Oh, you're a Jason Bateman person now. Yeah. Well, um, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> lucky you. What else do you... I, I couldn't get past the second episode. I tried really hard. What? Yeah, I know. I don't. I know. And I, I get in. I watch a lot what of TV. What person are you? What do you like to watch? I, I've watched everything on Netflix from House of Cards to Orange is the New Black. No, but you would love this. I, I feel like I would, right? I, you would. No, you would. I, I got to commit to more than two episodes, though. Yeah. See, I'm kind of a maniac because when... 
when I start something, I'm like, yeah, I have to finish it. See, that's why you're watching for so long. You have a commitment thing. But I've always been that way. Like when I start reading a book, it's like I have to finish this today. Like I can't put it down until I finish it. Are you like that with everything? Everything. Do you if I find a, 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 a type of food I like, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to have to eat this now every day until <laughs> I don't want it anymore. <laughs> Just everything. Do you need to leave the studio with a song? Um, I would really, really, really like to, but sometimes, sometimes you just end up like hanging out in the studio. That's what's really, that's what's really hard about being a chatterbox <laughs> and like, like to do music. Cause sometimes I'm like, why can't we just like chat? Like, why can't we just hang out? And people are like, yeah, but we're also here to work. Um, I friend. always want. I always want stuff to be like a vibe. And then people are like, yeah, but I have my yoga at six. So (laughs) (laughs) why can't we hang out all night and just like talk about our childhood? (laughs) (laughs) Starting and starting and needing to finishing things. Uh, I mean, that's like a very, that's a commitment thing. You commit to things. Respectable. You know what? I have to take that back. I only commit to things that I think is fun. And I can't finish stuff that I don't think is fun or interesting. It's impossible. That's why I still haven't graduated school. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I'm smart, I promise. <laughs> School's important, but when you have a career like you do, I mean, you're doing all right. Yeah, I guess. How I don't old- have a, not, a, a lot of stuff left. I should just do it. How old are you these days? These days, I'm 22. Oh, wow. Still young. I feel like we met you forever ago, though. You did, honestly. Like, a good five years ago, I think. Oh, my God. Time flies. Isn't that scary? It's been that long? That's wild. Zara, I have some questions about the Love Me Land lyrics. Yeah, But I'm going to be careful because I got to be honest, people gave me so much on the internet because in I Can't Fall in Love Without You, you kind of reference, like, not being able to get it up. And I asked you about that. and. People on the internet gave me so much crap for it. I'm like, I'm asking the girl about a lyric. I'm not randomly asking her about erectile dysfunction. She's writing about it. I'm asking about the lyrics. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let me, let me hear it. Let me hear it. I don't judge. Okay. The line, take me home, don't call me Mary. Mm-hmm. Cause Is that about a virgin? Hey, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ding, ding, ding. But a lot of people are wondering, like, why would he call you Mary? And I'm like, Virgin Mary. But, but it's a hard. It's like one of those genius lines that I have to to sit and and explain in the genius videos. Okay, so we have Mary accounted for. What else, Daniel? Well, I just want to know why you didn't think you'd ever be able to love again. <sighs> That's just a lyric. Okay. But, <laughs> but you know, like, because obviously I'm a very positive person. And I think even though something ends, there will be something else. Um, but sometimes when you might have been through a breakup and you're like, Ugh, how will I ever find someone who is as good as you? Like, it's just impossible. I'm never going to love someone like I loved you. And then, uh, wrong, here he comes, even better. At least I had that, especially after my first breakup. Like, And that was also my first boyfriend. And I think that is some is something special about that first love. It just cuts you the deepest because you have nothing to compare it to. You have nothing to, like... I don't know, you think, like, this is the one and only person. And then it ends up being completely wrong. Well, you were kind of hoping that someone would ruin your life. You did sing about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, also my, that was also my first boyfriend. We were very dramatic. <laughs> you got a lot of great records. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, how do you look back at those moments? I mean, it, well, obviously, they're kind of forever with you in these songs. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think 
every song tells a story and especially ruin my life i did get a little criticized for that because of what i'm singing of like how can you especially like a woman in a relationship want someone to ruin your life where there's people who are for real like doing that whether it is down to abusive relationships or like um so, like in any shape or form and i i kind of knew that i would get that because that's what i was thinking when i was like recording it but then it's also you know that angle of like like i said my first relationship was very 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 dramatic um and it's not even though it's not right of course you don't want someone to ruin your life but you i and at that point i just felt like i would do anything for him like i was at a very weak point where he was like my weak spot and i would let him do anything just to keep him in my life like i just like you can make me cry every day and i still want you and that's not really right and i think somewhere in my like when i was making music i also realized that everything doesn't have to be like I'm a strong girl. I don't need anyone. I'm cuz like I'm a human being yeah. and there's also strength in being very vulnerable in like admitting like I want you to f my life up and I know it's not right but I just need you. And that's how I felt and like I think that's also an important part of and also why I talk about it now because I also realize of course that I don't want someone to literally ruin my life especially not now when I'm like over it but at, at that point when I was very very young and we were just so incredibly mean to each other um that's what that's what I was feeling but like, you were so in love and you were okay with it yeah like that was my truth and uh and I think you know I should be able to like sing about that too even though it's not right or what love should be it was what love was for me at that point. That was like my only reference to love. Honest. Honest yeah. art. You can't hate it. And really, it's hard to critique it in a sense. Yeah. I still get it. But, you know, and especially me being like a feminist, like, I don't want to. But maybe that's why I could be able to sing about it. Because I am such a strong feminist. And I really believe in in that and the whole movement and like what everybody is 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 talking about and how i despite like because just because you're in a vulnerable position doesn't mean you're like a weak person like anyone could be in a strange relationship and that doesn't mean that they're not like a strong woman you know like a compromising situation doesn't mean like they're not could be strong totally yeah do, I think people in those types of situations, whether they're currently enduring them or after dealing with them, s still moving forward, it's strength across the board, right? Whether yeah. you're, yeah, it, yeah, who knows why people are still in situations like that? It could be for kids. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, strength comes in all different forms and in different yeah. ways. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, and it was a really good song. <laughs> 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 Great record. Do we have a date or an idea of when you want to put an album out or no? I do. I have a date in a month, but I can't tell you. Yeah, but is that for you or is that for like the label to follow? That's like what we what we said now. I, like so, I wanted it out yesterday, <laughs> but at the same time, I I I do want it out yesterday, but I also want things to go right and like i said earlier this time i have some sort of a plan and uh i'm really really excited for like in my head it's almost like i'm at album number three mm -hmm. you know? i get it yeah because so i'm just ahead. excited to like get it out let the world hear it and then move on and like make some more new music um, cause I don't think I want to do any more sessions than that until it's out and I can like start fresh. Cause now I have this baby and it's beautiful. It's so fun. It's, it's, a, it's like one of my, when you go and see my concert, like I want it to have dynamics. I don't want it to only be like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I also don't want to cry the whole time. 
I get it. Like, yeah, it's a roller coaster. You know, yeah, a bit of everything. So, are you thinking 2021? No, 2020. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Final thoughts, Daniel Zola. We've covered so much. I think we covered a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. I love talking to you guys. Zara, I miss, I, you. I, I miss you too. I wish it was in person, but hopefully soon. I, I'm sending you in that exquisite lamp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> healthy vibes and positive energy you really that, i i want to understand what that lamp means the turtle and the crane and the eating of the yes yes and the eating of the butterfly maybe i should write a song about it pet, pet the crane yeah <laughs> uh i appreciate you giving us time and energy thank you so much sending you a lot of love sending you guys a lot of love and i hope to see you in real life soon <laughs> Yes, please. And also send, I don't know if your, uh, your, your manager or day-to-day manager is around with you. She's the brightest light and I love her energy. I don't know uh, if she's there, but I say hi. Aw. I will cute. say hi to her. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Love. Bye. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got Eclipse Channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, subscribe. And uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.